how to transform a $1,000 bug to a $1 million bug. Hello guys, it's Johnny Time and welcome to another Web3 security tutorial. Today I'm going to show you a mind-blowing new tool that is going to help you find real bugs on real protocols that are deployed on mainnet blockchains at scale. This is one of the most impressive tools that I've came across in Web3 security recently. And in this video, I'm going to show you what is this tool, how to use it and how to maximize it to find vulnerabilities across multiple protocols on multiple chains and maximize your bounty as a Web3 bounty hunter. So whether if you are Web3 security auditor or bug hunter, this video is perfect for you. So without further ado, let's get started. You probably know that Web3 security is quite new. And since this industry is quite new, the innovation in the space always surprised me. There are always new tools and techniques to improve your auditing process and your bug hunting process. And also there are always new novel attack classes being discovered. A very nice example of a recent attack class that was discovered by Trust Security is this article from January 14th, Permission Denied, the story of an EIP that sinned. In short, this is a denial of service bug that was found by someone from Trust Security team and eventually they figured out that they can apply this vulnerability on 30 plus projects on Immunify and also more projects that are not in Immunify, which is a bug bounty program, and eventually they were able to earn $50,000 from 15 projects that allow them to get a bounty for this particular bug. So what we can see here is a new attack class, new bug, that eventually there was a research to find if this bug is applicable to multiple protocols on multiple blockchains and eventually get paid as much as we can as white hat hackers and get nice reward for our effort of finding this bug, exploding it, and also applying it to multiple protocols. And obviously everything is in a legitimate way to get rewarded for your work that you have put in place and pr eventually prevent from other malicious black hat hackers from exploiting these protocols. So let's say you found an attack vector, something like this, a new attack vector. It could be in an audit contest, maybe a private audit that you've done to a client, or maybe you explored some bug bounty programs and you find a specific bug and now you want to scale the reward and see whether this bug applies to more protocols. We also know that protocols use very similar code. Sometimes they literally fork other protocols and do some minor changes. And we have a lot of similar protocols in Web3 landscape. So this is exactly what this new innovative tool Glider can help you with. Glider is a new crazy tool developed by Hexens and I've never seen such tool before. It's simply a tool that scrapes a lot of smart contracts on multiple blockchains. Currently it supports Ethereum testnets and Ethereum mainnet, but I believe more blockchains will be added in the future. And it simply gives you a query language, language called CodeQL, which is kind of based on Python. So if you have some experience in Python, it's gonna be pretty easy for you. But even if you don't have experience in Python, the syntax is not complicated at all. And you can simply write queries, simple queries that will help you find those vulnerabilities on multiple smart contracts that are deployed on the blockchain. So let me try to simplify it for you. Assume you found a new bug that is regarding a specific function in a specific smart contract, and you want to see if this bug exists in other contracts, you can basically break down the characteristics of this bug to different instructions and properties, and then build a query using Glider. Once the query is ready, you can just select here the blockchain, run the query, and then the Glider engine is going to scan all the indexed contracts of this blockchain and try to find contracts that match your query pattern. And that way you can discover the new smart contracts, maybe that had some funds, have some TVL that has the same bug, so you can report to the protocol and secure the funds and eventually maybe get also a bounty. Glider is a game changer tool for web security because it allows you 
to scale up your rewards and scale up your work when it comes to Web3 security. Imagine you can find a specific bug and then you can find out that this bug exists in like 40 different protocols. And instead of just reporting to one protocol, you can report to all the protocols and get much higher rewards and much bigger return of investment on your time. So as you can see, Glider is currently in beta and we have Ethereum testnets and mainnet uh, supported. Now they don't allow everyone to scan the mainnet because this is quite sensitive. They are aware of the fact that there are some malicious actors that might come and take advantage of this tool to find bugs on Ethereum mainnet on real smart contracts with real money. And therefore you need to get a special permission currently in order to scan the Ethereum mainnet. But don't worry if you're watching this video right now and you use the link in the description below, which is a special link that Glider will see that you came from my Johnny time video, they might give you this access faster. So go ahead, open the account through the link in the description below, and maybe you'll also have access to the Ethereum unit if you want to explore Glider and see what vulnerabilities exist on different contracts that are already deployed on the blockchain. So when you will open Glider, you'll see already that you have some boilerplate queries that are prepared from you from Hex and Steam. And the first one is pretty simple and straightforward, which is self destruct. This query is going to find contracts that are deployed in Ethereum common testnet currently, if I select here common testnet, that has the opcode self-destruct. The self-destruct opcode stands for self-destruct and simply just going to remove the bytecode of the smart contract from the blockchain and send all the contract funds to the parameter that is passed to the self-destruct function. And you can see that the syntax is pretty easy and straightforward. First, we import all the glider functions. This is a classic import in Python. Then we define a function called query. Again, it's a Python code, Python syntax. Here, we simply iterate over all the functions of all the contracts in the Covan testnet blockchain. And this is going to go to the instructions. And eventually this whole expression will go into the instructions variable that will be returned from the query function, which are the instructions for the query. Uh, and here we start to do some filtering. So the first filter that we do is we want to filter out functions that have modifiers because we want to see if these functions don't have modifiers like only owner or something like this to narrow down our search to find accessible functions for us to initiate self-destruct for the contract. So without properties, and here we use the method probe has modifiers. Then we level down the instructions into the function itself. So here we iterate through the functions and this is inside the function. And here we're searching for an operation inside a function of self-destruct. See if the function includes the self-destruct code over here. And here we narrow down uh, the filter to 100 results only to not overwhelm the glider engine. And bear in mind that there is also timeouts. So if you don't limit your search, you might get a timeout and don't get results at all. So let's try to run this query over here. It will take a few seconds. It's actually pretty fast. I was super surprised when I, I checked this out and the speed really shocked me. And a few seconds later, you can see that it took 30 seconds. We have 31 uh, megabytes in memory and we have 100 results. So we have 100 smart contracts on Coven testnet that include a self-destruct opcode. And we can see that we got different results. We have here all the items. Uh, so we have here contract. This is the contract name. It's called sacrifice. And here already in the constructor, we use the self-destruct over here. So you can see both the contract name, the contract address, and the function, you have a snippet of the function that is using the self-destruct opcode. And here it's on the constructor. We don't have to do anything with it. It doesn't seem like a bug. Here we have another internal function cleanup, which we cannot call because it's an internal function. Here we have another cleanup function and our constructor in sacrifice contract, a lot of sacrifice contracts. Here we have another uh, contract called blockchain registry contract. And this contract has a function, external public function, kill contract. It uses self-destruct and send all the funds to message sender. But here we have some kind of access control to make sure that the message sender has the admin role. So again, we cannot exploit this bug. It's not exploitable because only the admin can call it. And you can see a lot of different functions here that utilize the self-destruct opcode. Op and this is just a basic example. There, there are so many demos and so many examples of what kind of value you can extract from this 
this super powerful tool. For instance, let's say you want to filter out all these constructors or all these functions which you cannot access and you want to create a more sophisticated query. Here we have a self-destruct advance which is much more sophisticated. First of all, we filter out all the internal functions. We use only external and public. We also filter out the constructor because we don't have access to the constructor, only the account that deploys the smart contract. And we have many, many more filters. We're not going to deep dive into the technicalities of how to implement those filters and the for loops, because if you want to dive deeper, you have an entire documentation for you available in Gitbook, Glider introduction and all the usage, everything that you need. I will put all the links in the description below of this video so you can check it out and start playing around with Glider. Let's try to run this query, this self-destruct advance and see what kind of results we get. There we go. We got 12 results, which is already better because we filter out a lot of uh, spam. And here we have uh, contracts that are more vulnerable and we can maybe actually trigger the self-destruct. For example, this one, Price Oracle Mock is a contract that has a kill external function without any modifiers. The function receives a beneficiary and just calls the self-destruct and funds all the eater to the beneficiary. Great, this is just accessible. Anyone can just call this function and destroy the contract and get all its funds. And here, let's see what we have. Another one, self-destruct erase wallet function on time lock wallet, self-destruct to address of the owner. Since we are not the owner, it's not exploitable. But the idea here is to show you the power of this tool, how you can narrow down your search and your results and find exploitable contracts on the blockchain. So with great power comes great responsibility. So if you use this tool, make sure to choose the right path, the white hat path to report to the protocol to secure the user funds and not to steal them like black hat hackers that eventually gonna get what they deserve. The karma will hit back, the law enforcement will, will catch them. We are the white hat hackers army and we are here to enhance the security in Web3. So you can really be creative with Glider and create whatever query you want and to find different bugs. We just explore self-destruct, but let's try something else. So there is this bug when there is an accessible burn, burn function in ERC721 tokens or ERC20 tokens that simply allows anyone to burn tokens for other users. And let's say we want to find this bug and see if it exists in any of the on-chain deployed contracts. So we can just create here a new query. Let's call it ERC uh, burn, something like this. And I prepared in advance here this code that we can basically go through and understand. So we have here the query. We search for the burn and underscore burn functions. These are the properties. We want the functions to be only public or external. We want to make sure that these functions receives any arguments so we can pass some accounts that we want to burn tokens for and that it has no modifiers. So here we define all the variables and here we basically build the query uh, of the functions. So we add the name uh, prefixes burn and underscore burn and we add all the other properties that we defined over here and eventually limit the results to 100 results. So let's try to search it first on Kovan and then on Ethereum Manic to see if there are any accessible burn functions. And there we go, guys. 93 results. It took only one second because the search was pretty simple. And now we got a lot of functions, burn, burn from, that have all the specifications that we described over here in the query. And we can dive deeper and see if some of them are vulnerable for the burn vulnerability. Now I want to show you the last example, which is ERC-777 re-entry. So if you are not familiar with ERC-777 tokens, it's like ERC-20 tokens, but they have callbacks, special to callbacks before and after token transfer, which opens the possibility of re-entry attacks. And by the way, we have an amazing challenging exercise in the smart contract hacking course of how to exploit ERC-777 re-entry attack. Now, we're not going to dive in this video what is ERC-77 reentry attacks, but I will try to summarize it for you. We are basically looking for a contract that interacts with 
ERC-777 tokens and perform these functions in this order. Balance off, check the account's balance, then transfer the tokens from the account and then check the balance again. And then it might be a contract that is vulnerable to this uh, reinforcing attack. So let's start by scanning the Ethereum mainnet this time and see if we have any potential vulnerable contracts. And we actually found two results on Ethereum mainnet. Now, obviously, these results are going to be censored because I don't want to reveal contracts that might have vulnerabilities with funds on Ethereum mainnet. This is very sensitive, so I'm not going to um, show you <laughs> like what is the contract address, but you can see here the power of Glider, how you can literally find exploitable contracts on mainnet as a bug hunter, as a security researcher, and the possibilities are crazy. And this is just a new tool. I can't imagine how it's going to look like in a few months when they're going to add more features, more blockchains, and this is very, very powerful. So let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below, if you have any suggestions or stories of how you use Glider. And again, if you want to check this amazing tool, give it a try and play with it a bit, or maybe even use it in your bug hunting process or auditing competitions, check out the link in the description below and they will see that you referred by Johnny and maybe also open the Ethereum Manet features for you if you are a bug hunter that are hunting for bugs on Ethereum. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for learning with me and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.